Okay, there are three things that go into the margin of error calculation. The sample size, the confidence level, and the standard deviation, okay? All right, let's start with the sample size. The more samples we have will result in a smaller margin of error. Remember, the smaller margin of error, more narrow, the better, which means the more samples we do, the better, obviously. You can't have enough samples, but there's time and money involved in getting more samples, of course. But the more samples you get, the better off your study is going to be in any statistical uh, analysis, whether it be this chapter or any other chapter, just the more is better, okay, always. All right, which will result in a smaller margin of error and a more narrow interview. The fewer samples you have will result in a larger margin of error and a wider interval, okay? So kind of like opposite, bigger sampler, smaller margin of error, smaller sample, bigger margin of error, okay? The other two go hand in hand, higher, higher, or lower, lower. And most people think, hey, if I have a higher confidence level, it, it'll be a better, um, it'll be a better uh, interval. With, but that's not true. Remember, if I am 99% confident, then that means I have to be 99% sure that that population mean is within those two numbers, which will result in a larger margin of error and a wider interval, because I have to be more confident that that population mean is in that window. Okay. If I only said I had to be 70% confident, then, you know, that, that decreases it because I could have a, a, a smaller margin of error, more narrow interval, because I don't have to be as confident. So, um, you know, I can't sit there and, and toot my horn saying, yeah, I'm 70% confident, uh, but it'll be more narrow it'll be, and it'll be a smaller margin of error. But the more confident I have to be, that'll increase the margin of error and result in a wider confidence interval, okay? And the last one is standard deviation. Just think about it. If I had readings, remember what standard deviation means? How far is, is the data away from the mean? If, if, the, if the results are all over the place, they're not really consistent, I'm going to have a larger margin of error and a wider interval. And if I have a small standard deviation, more consistent readings, that'll result in a smaller margin of error and a more narrow interval. With that said, there's... Okay, with that said, if we already decided on the error and confidence level for the confidence interval, then a population with a standard deviation of 30 will require a greater sample size than a population with a standard deviation of 20. That is true, because remember, if I um, if I want to keep if I want to keep the margin of error and the confidence interval the same, then um, then <clears throat> A 30 will result in a wider window as opposed to 20, so I need to the uh, I, I will need to up the sample size if the standard deviation is 30 as opposed to 20. Had to read that one. Um, no, that's false because um, you, whether you use the Z or T has nothing to do with the sample size. It all has to do with uh, it, it, we use Z. Or use T if we, if we if we get the standard deviation from the sample, uh, so the sample standard deviation, and we use Z if we know the population standard deviation, and that'll be given in the problem. So whether we use T or Z has nothing to do with the sample size, uh, greater or less than 30, zero correlation. Okay, we just talked about this. If the confidence level is decreased, the standard deviation and the sample size stay the same. In other words, you know, if all that's changing is the confidence level, then the bigger the confidence level, the wider or mar larger margin of error, and the smaller confidence level, the s smaller margin of error. So the error will be increased, which is false, because when we decrease the confidence level, we decrease the error, not increase. Okay, this is kind of like a, this is redundant, but, you know, increasing the sample size in addition to decreasing a level of confidence, okay, two ways of obtaining a narrow margin of error, but that is true, okay? The more samples we get, the narrower margin of error. The lower confidence level, the smaller margin of error, okay? Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, so the, remember, confidence level, standard deviation, go hand in hand with increase, decrease, margin of error. The only one that's kind of inverse to sample size. The bigger the sample size, the smaller margin of error. The smaller the sample size, the bigger margin of error. Okay, pause this for a second and see if you could get it without looking at the answer, which I'll reveal in a minute.
Okay, you guessed it. If you guessed it right, sample size of 30. Remember, uh, wider confidence interval means smaller sample size, okay? So, um, so we know we're in the 30 as opposed to 100. If we were talking about wider confidence interval now, uh, if we have 30 as opposed to 100, we know it's one of these two. Which one of 99 or 95 gives us a wider confidence interval? The 99 does, right? Okay, this was in a video and a document earlier in the course, but I thought it was it would be time to readdress it in case you forgot or don't know where to find it, or you know, probably a combination of both. The nomenclatures for things, um, for mean, the sample mean is x with a little bar, population mean is this Greek symbol, whatever it is, standard deviation for a sample, oh, that's backwards, oh, no, wait a minute. I did have it backwards the first time, so hopefully um, you didn't write it down before I caught it. Okay, the sample standard deviation is just like a little s, um, and the population standard deviation is this Greek symbol, whatever it is, okay? The number of data points, okay? So uh, say I have a classroom of 30, and that's my population. My N, capital N, is 30, because that's how many students are in my class. And if I decide to take the uh, sample of 10 students, see what their mean score is, small n, which is sample size, is the number of data points there. A particular data value, that's all x. Like a particular data value, whether it's sample or population, is x. So of those 10 samples that took a score, each individual score has an x value. 71, 73, 75, those are x values, okay? Each, if I'm doing speeds of cars, 70, uh, 41, 42, 38, each particular speed I document is an x value, so that doesn't matter whether it's sample or population. And proportion, I don't know if there's a difference between this small uh, sample and population, I really don't know, but p is proportion, okay? With that said, um, that's... Uh, Let's do this one. This is uh, would be the first problem. One of the first problems you'll see in your uh, section for calculation of uh, mean. Okay, so you grab the margin of error. You, you grab the spreadsheet I told you to grab earlier, the one that corresponds to uh, calculating margin of error and confidence interval for a mean. Okay, and does uh, the sample size n is twelve? Okay, the mean is x bar, remember that's, we just went over that 30, and the standard deviation, small s, is 8, and 95% confidence level. See, the standard deviation of the sample is 8. We do not know the population standard deviation, so we enter the confidence level as a t value. And most of the time, you'll enter the 90, uh, confidence level as a t value because we're doing sample size, mean, standard deviation and of a sample and most not a majority of the time it'll result in a standard deviation from the sample but once in a while very very rare but once in a while they'll throw in the population standard deviation is this to try to throw you off and i think there's like maybe one or two problems at the very end okay and uh so anyway um So for the, the you don't the, for this problem you don't need the margin of error, but the sample size is thirty. The margin of error is calculated as uh, give your answers to three decimal places, so it would be five point zero eight three. So if I take thirty plus five point zero eight three, I get this answer. See, they give the answers here in the system, but if you do what you if you follow what they tell you to, it'll be marked right. So twenty four point nine one seven, twenty four point nine one seven. And 35.083. If you follow what they tell you, you'll get it right, okay? even though their answers go all the way out to no man's land. Okay? 24.917 to three places, 35.083 to three places. Okay? And again, they didn't ask for it. So basically, how they got it, even though they didn't ask for it, but you got to know these things. They took the sample mean 30, we calculated the margin of errors, 5.083. So 30 plus 5.083 will give you the 35.083, and 30 minus 5.083 will give you the 24.917, okay? Okay, this one, you know, the first one they asked you, let's see, it's not the, the first few, the first several problems, they asked you to 
here's the population mean. Remember, the population mean is known to be between this number and this number, okay? Enter this lower number here, enter the bigger number here. Now, they want you to do the same thing, except they want you to uh, express your confidence interval as a um, open interval. In other words, parenthesis, lower number, comma, higher number, and parenthesis, okay? So you just have to pay attention to how they want the answer. And make sure if you miss this parenthesis or this parenthesis, or if you miss this comma, um, you're going to get it wrong. So make sure you enter it how they want you to, okay? Make sure you enter it how they want you to. All right? So here the sample size is 37. The mean is 24.6. Standard deviation is 16.8. And uh, so they, you know, so use our sample results, see sample results. And most of them, that's what you're using. You always have to pay attention. Make sure you're using the sample standard deviation when you put in this confidence of one T. And again, it's very rare, but there are a couple they throw in there. Well, the population standard deviation is this, which in that case, you have to go here. But again, the majority of the time, you'll use the T confidence level, which result in this column. And uh, so what it did was take the mean 24.6, Calculated a margin of error and got this for the lower and this for the upper, okay, around the three decimal places, okay? So 18.999 and 30.201, okay? This one, the other looking is uh, for the max maximum margin of error is the same thing as a margin of error, okay, basically, all right? So you're not interested in anything but the margin of error, which means you don't, you don't, you do not need Oh, here it is, the population standard deviation. Ha, huh, see, there they are, they tricked you here, okay? So the sample size is 34. The mean, you don't even need a mean of 35. If you, all you're looking for is the margin of error, you don't even need the mean, but okay, we'll throw it in there. Um, population standard, you still enter the standard deviation in the same place, whether it's mean or, uh, or population, whether it's sample or population, however, it's you have to enter the confidence level down here if it is a population standard deviation. And there you go. Your margin of error is 2.08 ounces. You didn't even need to put this mean in here. You do not need the mean that if you, all you're looking for is the margin of error. Okay? See, it still calculates it. Okay? If you want your confidence level, then you need to put it in there, obviously. Okay? So if I go and put that back in there, it gives me a confidence interval. Okay? Okay, this time they ask for ask you for your answer in terms of give me the mean, give me the sample mean here, and plus or minus whatever that margin of error is here. Well, without even doing anything, I know what this answer is: forty-six point eight, because they gave it to us here. Because it's always the sample mean which they gave us in this problem, plus or minus the whatever the margin of error turns out to be. Okay, so uh, and again, oh, uh, so go to margin of error. So the sample size is twenty-five. The mean, again, we don't even really need the mean, but we'll put it in there. Standard deviation, um, 5.2, and that would be uh, T.8. All right, so you would put 46.8 here, and there's my to three decimal places, 1.371, so 46.8. And again, 1.371, that, that 46.8 is not calculated because they gave it to you right here, okay? Okay, a fitness center is trying to find the uh, number of days per week that Americans go to the uh, gym. So sample size is 257, 257. Uh, look at their mean, it was uh, 3.1 times a week with a standard deviation of 2.6. We use a t-distribution because it's uh, we don't know the population standard deviation. We arrived at, at the, from the mean, and that goes here, 0.9. Uh, and there is your 2 point, so between 2.8 and 3.4, basically, times per week. Now, this one down here, all this is then, if, I, if many groups of 257 selected numbers are studied, the... <clears throat> Whatever this is goes here, and the difference from 100 goes here. That's all it is, okay? All right? That's all that is. So there's your information, and then 90% goes here, 